Good evening. Uh, good evening. Um, uh, I want to welcome you to uh, the first Fifth Sunday gathering of the National Convocation. Um, I'm, it's my privilege to introduce Jane myself Williams. to Join some the of meeting. you uh, and to reintroduce myself to, to others. Uh, my name is Reverend Yvonne Gilmore, and I have the privilege of serving as Interim Administrative Secretary of the National Convocation. Uh, Psalms 133, right? It starts off and it says how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. Uh, and at the end, it's just three verses. It says, for there the Lord ordained his blessing forevermore. Uh, as we uh, thought about this interim time and the fact that we don't have to wait together, to wait to get together uh, for a biennial session, we can get together uh, on fifth Sundays. And so I'm so grateful for the leadership of uh, the Fellowship of Black Disciples Clergy Women. They agreed uh, to host this very first one. Uh, so when you put your hands together with your hands and put your hands together in your hearts, uh, we're just gonna get really excited and bless the Lord for them and for their leadership. Uh, I look forward to speaking with you later, uh, but thank God for uh, their president, uh, the one and only Reverend Monique Crane Spells uh, as she comes now, God bless you. God bless you, uh, Reverend Gilmore. And I thank you for inviting us. We are grateful to be in fellowship. We don't take any time that we can gather together for granted. We know that we are in perilous times. So every time uh, that we experience the breath of God in our bodies and experience it in one another, we all celebrate. And so we are going to honor time and make sure that we are uh, moving right along in our experience of this hour of power. I want to very quickly uh, let you know that um, we'll be having a song and then uh, we'll be having our invocation will be from Reverend Ann Pickett Parker out of Betty Burton. We will have Join the meeting. Remembering Our Roots, a time of remembering our roots with Reverend Sidney Ava in New York. And then we'll have some poetry for the people from Reverend Dr. The Leslin uh, Kennebrew out of Missouri. Belinda, Belinda King, our vice president, uh, will be bringing Marilyn Fidmont out of Indiana. We'll have a song from Reverend Paula Pettis Garrett, also out of Indiana. Uh, I will bring a Join brief, the meeting. concise holy word. And then we'll receive a benediction from Reverend Anita Cobb and be guided into further conversation with our interim administrative secretary, Reverend Yvonne Gilmore. Welcome to the Hour of Power, hosted by the Fellowship of Black Disciples Clergywomen. God is good and worthy to be praised. Let us worship.
believe in your love, even when we feel unlovely. We are assured of your grace, even when we labor under guilt. We stand firm in your power, even when we have no power to stand ourselves. And oh Lord, my God, we realize that there is no way we can live without you. Everything we need, everything we need, Lord, is found in you. There may be some of us who came here today feeling broken, bring restoration. For those of us who come here feeling weak, bring strength. For those who come here crying, weeping, bring joy, Lord. For those of us who come here with doubts, oh, bring faith. For those who come here feeling shame, bring freedom. For those of us who come here feeling burden, give us rest, Lord. And if you're feeling just a little bit anxious, bring peace, Lord. We pray this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This reading is made up of excerpts from Journey Toward Wholeness, Volume 1, by Brenda M. Caldwell and William Fox, Sr., and the National Christian Missionary Convention Minutes of 1917. Remembering our roots. 41 persons gathered in Nashville, Tennessee on September 5th, 1917. Each were self-starters and high achievers. One must quickly dispel the notion that the founders of the National Christian Missionary Convention were unlearned, unlearned neophytes striving for a place in the sun. Each had lived through slave and or post-Civil War years, climbing steep hills to become mature and refined church leaders in their own right. Among some of these disciples attending the first National Christian Missionary Convention were the following. We speak their names. Preston Taylor, Sarah Lou Bostic, William Alfin, W.H. and C.H. Dickerson, Dr. J.E. Walker, Rosa V. Brown, Henry L. Herod, R.E. Pearson, P.H. Moss, W.A. Scott, T.R. Everett, Sarah Blackburn, W.P. Martin. We speak their names. Considering the highly charged secular atmosphere between the races in the United States at the time of the Nashville meeting, it may be considered quite remarkable that the meeting was held at all. James Blair, in trying to summarize the reasons for the formulation of the National Christian Missionary Convention, made the following observations. The need for a good institution of higher education, which could provide quality education for black people. Treatment of second class Christian citizenship, which seemed to permeate most relationships between blacks and whites in the church. Lack of public accommodations being available to blacks when they attended large gatherings of white members of the Christian church and no strong advocacy by the white convention for securing such accommodations. Lack of communication between the church bureaucracies serving blacks and an unwritten policy that blacks were being told what was best for them rather than being asked what was best and a lack of understanding of black disciples themselves need for an elimination of stereotype ideas about race through the creative interaction 
of competent blacks and whites. Blair's notes concluded that the first NCMC was the means by which the brotherhood, brotherhood being the language used at that time for the wider church, was shocked into the awareness that the Negro had changed and had to be encountered in a different way. Let us pause and give God thanks for the visionary ancestors that gathered in 1917, our roots. Amen and Ashe. Greetings and good evening, everyone. I will be sharing an original piece entitled, O oh, Freedom. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me and before I be a slave. I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. And be free, just be free, just live free, just look free, just speak free, just be free. Freedom appears to wear different kinds of shackles today. The shackles don't always present as chains physically binding hands and feet. The shackles of today are the intellectual, emotional, political, social chains that are often seen by the naked eye, that are unseen by the naked eye due to the lie. The lies, the lies, all oh, the lies that keep us shackled to beliefs that reject truth, deny justice, ignore patriarchy, and support racism. All oh, the lies that keep us shackled to ideologies and pathologies that make room for sexist policies, generational poverty, preschool to prison criminology, and oh, the lies that keep us shackled to theologies that denounces love of self, selectively loves certain neighbors, and limits the power of God to see that God has this day set us over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. The lies, the lies, oh, the lies must be rejected. Our freedom must be protected. The lies must be dejected. Our bodies must be celebrated. The lies must be stopped. Our minds must be opened, transformed, and re renewed so that we live into our freedom for our freedom is good and it is reasonable regardless of your acceptability or respectability oh freedom oh freedom oh freedom oh Just live free, just speak free, just be free, free to 
to sing the Lord's song in a strange land, free to protest the people and the system and the places that are far from righteous, free to march to the sound of Zion and the drumbeat of Africa, free to love and prioritize our issues, our businesses, our families, and our voices, free to be before the roll is called up yonder, free before more bodies are prematurely buried in their graves, free before we breathe our final sacred breath, free in our minds, free for our bodies, free deep in our souls, and whom the sun has set free is free indeed, singing, oh, 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 oh freedom, oh, 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 freedom, oh, freedom over me, and before I be your slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free and be free, just be free, just live free, just look free, just speak free, just be free in Jesus name. May our freedom be so. Amen. I will be reading to you from Psalms 121 using the New Revised Standard Version. Assurance of God's protection. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time and forevermore. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane. Then I have found, Lord, plant my feet 
on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God for that wonderful hymn, Paula. Our Reverend Paula Pettis Garrett has reminded me of home. At home, I call her glory of the Lord, Paula. <laughs> so I am celebrating uh, the glory of the God that has manifest in her and her singing witness. We praise God for those who have led us from across the country today. And we also thank uh, Reverend Ron Gilmore, our administrative secretary, for the invitation to allow the fellowship of Black Disciples clergy women to lead uh, the first hour of power. If you could pray with me for a moment and we'll be on to the word. Dear God, we thank you for being with us. God, we love you. We seek your voice in these and all times. We need to hear from you. So God, if you could call all flesh into submission to your spirit that we would be made anew. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Belinda has read the scripture for us and I will revisit just a little bit of the text for our learning. Psalm 121 verse 1, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And then down to verse seven, the Lord will keep you from all evil. God will keep your life. Then finally in verse eight, the Lord will join the meeting. You're going out and coming in from this time and forevermore. From this time, and forevermore. Look, look in your Zoom screen and give, give everybody a high five and say, from this time and forevermore. I like it better this way anyway than, than when we in person. <laughs> the title of today's message is Book Your Flight. Book Your Flight. It has been and continues to be a long season. Social distancing is layered with difficulty that affects our physical and mental health, but we must remain wise and keep safe. Many of us long to sit safely in the sun at the edge of some water somewhere and just simply be. Such a longing is not unique among us because we are people of the sun and most of our ancestors' roots trace back to coastal communities. There is no coincidence these serene settings pull at us as places of retreat and reflection, like that of a beating drum and the bass of house music. They feel like home. 
siblings in Christ, I encourage you to gaze with depth the next time you get the opportunity to sit at a creek. Consider that while you see a creek before you, that very creek will likely lead to a river. And when you stand or drive by a riverside, please contemplate that river is born of an ocean. Then when you have recovered the privilege of putting your toes on a sandy coastal beach once more, be sure to stand in awe of the fact that two thirds of the earth's surface is covered by ocean waters. And that collective of water is touching your feet. Oh, we're, we're communing now, you see. So digest that such a magnificent work could only be designed and made manifest by our magnificent God. If we are not a careful people, we will miss the river by way of the creek and the ocean by way of the river. Somebody say amen. Now come on back for a second because I know y'all at the beach. That's where I want to be. But keeping those assignments in mind, when it comes to scripture, we have this habit in the black church of rushing to the praise and missing the power. We think the power is in the praise because it feels good. We think the power is in the praise because it is the easiest outcome of reading scripture. There's no extensive study necessary to praise. It's the path of least resistance. So we rush to the praise and miss the power. But the power, I'm talking about God's power not our own finite power. God's life sustaining, liberating power is in the revelation. The power of God's unmatched, um, unmatched hand is evidence where what was once a mystery now becomes a place of clarity. Some folk call it aha moments, but really they're oh God moments. So what are you talking about? Monique, what are you getting at? Well, Psalm 121 tells us God is our help. And right there is where we want to cue up the ham and then E flat. We ready to go in on God is our help. But hold on. Let's revisit the text. Let's not rush to the praise and miss the power. The text says, I lift my eyes. Another version says, I look. Okay, well, look where? Look to the hills. And why are we doing that? Is there power in the hills? No, there's no power in the hills, but all power is going to meet us there in the hills. That's the revelation. God will help us as we head toward the hills. To the hills. Where are we looking? To the hills. Psalm 121 makes the declaration that God will five times. When something appears five times in an eight verse song, that's the hook. That's the hook. That's what they want us to catch. Let us open our minds and bodies and souls to the convincing power of the Holy Spirit and believe that God will. If we set our sight to higher ground, but are miseducated about who to look for when we get there. We will find ourselves still living like we're in the valleys we left. If we set our sight to higher ground, but are miseducated about who to look for when we get there, we will find ourselves still living like we're in the valleys we left. Psalm 121 is, a, is described as a song of ascent. Some scholars attribute it to a writer familiar with setting their eyes upon the hills. You see David, when just a child running errands in and out of the valley, decided he was weary of the disrespectful giant atop a mountain. He knew the power wasn't on the hill, but God's power would show up there when he looked that way and picked up a rock. Come on now, that, that wasn't the only time the songwriter looked to the hills. Shh. For him and for us, there shall be hills and valleys across our lifetime. 
Don't you remember when David was being chased out of town by the demon-possessed oppressor named Saul? He fled to meet Samuel in a place called Ramah. Well, Ramah translates an elevated spot. He went to an elevated spot. You can shout now or wait until you book your flight to the hills, whatever your hills are. Just know that God shall meet you there in the hills. So just be on your, your way. Be on your way, people of God. God is saying, be on your way. This passage was saying by folk who were on the move. It's about heading to a higher place a different existence, another location from where you were to somewhere else where God is calling you. God stands ready to release God's power on our behalf. If the status quo though, however, if the status quo is your flavor, if that's your thing, that's your sweet spot, this song is not for you. Find another song. This psalm is about focus and about faith. This psalm is a revelation about where to go and who to look for when you get there. This psalm, Black Disciples, is telling us to book your flight and let's go. The time has come for us to move intentionally toward a gospel of justice and anti-racist relationships, equity, and ancestral wisdom. God is going to meet us in the hills. We've just got to book our flight. Let's be clear, it has not been any presidential election that has made us well. It has not been a House or a Senate that has made us well. It has not been our education or ordination or any resolution on the floor of the General Assembly that has made us well. Black disciples of Christ, our faith has made us well. Our faith has made us well. In 1619, we look to the hills. In 1867, we look to the hills. In 1917, we look to the hills. In 1954, we look to the hills. In 1969, we look to the hills. And I'm asking you to look again. Look again to the hills. To the hills. I can look around and see insurrectionists and white supremacists and broken spirits who hate the power that has resided in us and continue to propel us forward. Or I can just look to the hills and pray you find your way out of that valley you in, hating on everything beautiful and black. Meet us in the hills, because that's what we're being called to. We've been keeping it moving since we got here. We're not new to this. God is with us and God is waiting for us to make our next move. Furthermore, God is waiting with help. God is waiting with help. Hallelujah. So all we have to do is book our flight. If we want advancement, if we want new vision and outcomes, if we want freedom, we must be people of movement who believe that God will. We must lift our eyes to the hills. Where will our help come from? Help will come from the Lord. So let's be on our way. To God be the glory. Amen. Yes, God. Amen. And hallelujah. Thank you. Reverend Monique, how we needed that refreshing moment this evening to get us going through this week. Let us now take a moment for our benediction. Oh God, oh God, who is our help? We have heard from you today. You have charged us, oh God, to look to the hills and look beyond to know that you are there waiting with help for us. So God, as we continue this week and we go forward, we pray, oh God, that you will give us the strength and courage to book our flights, that we might seek you, oh God, seek higher ground, oh God, that you would be with us, that you will keep us, that you will help us to help each other along the way. Bless us, oh God, until we can meet again in your glorious presence. Amen. Amen. I would like... 
for you all to stay on as our interim administrative secretary, Yvonne Gilmore, is going to come with some reflections for the future. Uh, bless the Lord, all oh my soul, Catherine, and all that is Join within. the meeting. Bless God's holy name. Can we put our hands and our hearts together and just let our sisters know, uh, let our, our fellowship of disciples, clergy women know how much uh, they blessed us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, let them know in the chat. Uh, let them know uh, long after this meeting. Uh, I'm, in fact, not going to come with reflections. I'm going to invite us um, to, to what say you, right? What has the Holy Spirit been saying to you? Part of our vision for uh, fifth Sunday gatherings, right, is that we would be strengthened, that we would lift up spirituals, blues, and future stories, right? The spirituals are our our, our, our history, right, and have some worship time, and we have done that, uh, to lift up the blues, right, which are those ashes that have not yet been transformed into beauty, but then to also lift up our future stories. I, I saw our, our president of the board of, of the National Convocation uh, said, right, God is calling us to transcend the hills. Uh, 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 Dr. Session said God is calling us to transcend the hills. What else do you uh, hear God calling for us to be? What ways do you hear God calling for us to grow uh, in, the, in the next year, two years, in the years to come? Uh, I know particularly uh, on my heart, right, as is, is I behold the, the beauty, the brilliance, the power of, of our uh, disciples, uh, clergy women uh, here in, the, in this fellowship, uh, right, is, is partly that we need to change some things uh, so that uh, the search and call system uh, enables them, uh, right, to, to be placed uh, so that their gifts are used powerfully uh, uh, in, the, in the years to come. Uh, that's on my heart. That's on my heart. What say you? You can unmute yourself at this point. Uh, you could not up until now, but I want to invite you, if it's, if it's on your heart, unmute yourself. Uh, what are our visions for the future? Place it in the chat. Walk in our purpose boldly. Uh, what else is the Lord saying tonight? My God, I this is Dr. Irie. I uh, I just feel like Reverend Monique Crane spelled really spelled it out for me uh, in terms of the future, uh, in terms of keeping our uh, or maybe um, returning our focus to a more social justice focused ministry. Um, and uh, I, man, I really don't have much more to add uh, what she said, but if we really think about and contemplate uh, those words uh, and the message that she gave us, it feels to me like uh, marching orders. It feels to me uh, really consistent with where your vision is uh, for us, uh, Dr. Yvonne. Um, and so I'm just looking forward to implementing all that I'm hearing and, and experiencing. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Session. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Uh, Belva Brown Jordan lifted up. This is a powerful gathering. Thank you for calling us to be together. I was going to say, I'm, I thank God. I think that also is a part of our future, that, that these Fifth Sunday gatherings are a time of strength and vision, right, as we move forward. I'm, I just thank God. Also, seven is a holy number. So, so the fact that we, we uh, hit 70, praise God. What else, what else do you hear the Spirit saying and calling forth into our future? Dismantle the toxic, toxic systems. I want to lift that up. We need to name that, right? Reverend uh, Verzola Law uh, said dismantle toxic systems. How, yes, we got to do that. Don't be afraid. <laughs> what, what, and you, and you, you can just share glimpses of what the Lord has placed on your heart. You don't even have to have fully formulated thoughts, but we want to make space to hear from the people. Making disciples that make disciples. Amen. 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 I, I, heard, I heard Reverend Crane Spell say transformed education. Uh, Marco Cable says reclaim our prophetic authority. Absolutely. I heard her address. We need to address lack of communication. Uh, uh, as, as we were revisiting the history, right? And they said that black disciples haven't been asked what they need. Uh, we need to do that. <laughs> we need not to make uh, assumptions about what black disciples need. We need, to, we need to be asking. 
reclaim our prophetic authority. Yes, yes. Uh, I heard uh, Dr. Kinnebrew lift up freedom wears different kinds of shackles, which suggests to me <laughs> looking at those different kinds of shackles that freedom wears so that we can get unshackled. And yes, uh, Dr. Dr. Crystal Bear, whatever we do, we must do it together. Amen. Worship and prayer to fuel the prophetic social movement. Yes, that's what we've been about. I thank God I see uh, 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 Reverend Janae Pitts Murdoch, who, who helped us uh, begin the year in prayer uh, on that second uh, Tuesday of the year. Uh, God is calling us to own our own power, uh, own our power to bring the power out of those who have. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Johnson. Value all members. Uh, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. What else is God saying? Leadership development is essential if we're going to have a future. Amen. Amen. Set our sights to higher ground. <laughs> uh, Reverend Crane Spells has told us to set our, height, set our sights to higher ground. She also reminded us, right, not to rush to the praise and miss, uh, right, the power. <laughs> Reverend Law says, I'm bringing a tambourine with me the next time I preach. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kidderbrew. <laughs> Christian Church of North Carolina, Dr. Valerie Melvin, looking forward to getting to know our convocation family more intimately. Yes, that's one of the other purposes of this gathering. Uh, funding new black churches. Hallelujah. Yes, we got to do that. We got to do that, Dr. Session. Dr. Irie. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. We, we're so grateful for the poetry for the people tonight. Amen. Amen. What else is God saying? We don't want to miss this. We are recording it and I'm taking notes. I've already, I have a whole page full. Um, bring out the power of those whose power has been silenced. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I want you to know, not only are we recording this, am I taking notes? Uh, I'm going to be following up <laughs> with, with you. You hold me accountable. We're going to hold each other accountable over these next two years uh, as we plan for a, a vibrant and vital future. Bring out the power of those whose power has been silenced. Yes, yes. Amen, amen. We're going to make space for just a few more, and then I'm, I'm going to invite us to uh, revisit and revision the values, purpose, and function of the National Convocation. Amen, absolutely. That's our commitment together over these next two years. Keep singing our songs that have brought us to this place. Yes, and will help take us to higher ground. Uh, the, the, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people uh, and, and in a beautiful way, right, in our music. Um, I, yeah, I thank God. I thank God even to be able to see bodies move on, on the screen. I miss being together in person, but I thank God for the technology of the spirit and the technology uh, right before us in these computer circuits that enable us to sing and praise and worship. Anything else the spirit is saying is lifting up tonight. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we give thanks, Reverend Paula carried us to a holy place, a place our people have traveled. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Uh, so friends, I, I just want to lift up right that this is uh, this is a starting place. <laughs> This is a starting place. Uh, you need to know a couple of things. One, the Fellowship of Black Disciples Clergy Women, if you're not connected and you want to be, uh, there is a website and I want you to go to it. Uh, National Convocation also has a, a website. I uh, want to lift that up uh, as well so that we can continue to be connected and support each other. Uh, so visit that if you want to get connected in that way. Uh, I want you to know um, coming up, we're going to have a, a soul uh, care moment, uh, soul care moment for Black clergy um, and you'll be able to register and sign up. It's going to be led by uh, Dr. Angela, Reverend Angela uh, Whitenhill, right, through the MBA, uh, as we all continue to try to heal from the trauma of what happened on uh, January 6th and that insurrection. There'll be a soul care moment on uh, February 10th. February 9th, we're going to gather in prayer. Uh, Reverend April Johnson reminded us, right, that prayer is not passive. Uh, and I know that to be true. I think we've seen tonight, right, prayer makes a difference, it changes things, something happens, right? The, the, the uh, move of God happens when we dare to get together and dwell in unity, right? Uh, God is lifted up. And so we're gonna do that February 9th and 10th. Uh, and then our next fifth Sunday, we'll, we'll be led by our Young Adult Fellowship Group is in May. Uh, so, so please do mark your calendars 
uh, get even more folk, friends, other, other church folk that you know, uh, to plan to be here. The National Convocation, we don't just gather at the biennial session, uh, but indeed we will gather on fifth Sundays. We will pray uh, every month and there'll be all kinds of programming to support uh, our churches. Uh, there are almost 600 uh, black churches. All Join around the meeting. The EU, but when I think about what 600 churches could do when they get together, <laughs> when I think about all the new churches we could start if we get together, when I think about all the people that can be supported, the jobs we can create, uh, the, the social justice initiatives, the systems we can transform when we work together. Uh, friends, I don't, I, yeah, my heart is, is full when I think about all that is possible if indeed we will gather and dwell and organize uh, and worship and dwell in unity. Um, so I'm so, so grateful. Uh, also for our general minister and president who's on the call tonight, thank you for making time uh, indeed to be here and to join us, our moderator, uh, Bevel Brown Jordan. Um, so, so grateful for, for each of you um, uh, this is a start, and so I've, I've taken notes from what's on here, but please don't hesitate. Uh, email me, send National Convocation a line. Uh, we really are listening. We really are, are bored. We're going to respond and, and make some real concrete plans uh, because God, in fact, he's, he's told us through Monique Crane's spells, right, to book our flights, uh, to book our flights. And so we want to be real clear about where we're going uh, on, on the flights, right? We want to be clear about this higher ground. And what it is, we want to be clear about where we've been miseducated, uh, and then we want to be transformed, right, so that we can go to new places uh, uh, because the glory of God is at stake. Uh, uh, our very lives, in fact, uh, is are at stake uh, in doing so. Uh, won't you join me now? We're just going to pray, and and uh, this really has been an hour of power, has it not? Uh, has it not been an hour of power? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Um, yeah, let's pray now. Uh, gracious God, we thank you for all the ways that you uh, have, have abided in this hour together, for all the ways you've kept us for uh, the, the worship that took place uh, this morning, and then uh, that these saints would make time to gather tonight. Uh, Lord, we pray uh, that you would bless all the seeds that have been planted. We pray that you would strengthen these connections, that they would grow, uh, Lord, and then that you would bring us back together again. Um, keep and empower us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Gilmore. Amen. Thank you. Fellowship. Bless y'all. And good night. Amen. Good night. Thank you. Blessings, everyone. Blessings, Bless everybody.